Peace, love, and light, everybody. You are now tuned in to Spiritual Shenanigans with your girl, Coco Kitten Bruja. And we are starting 2021 with all kind of dopeness. And I am very happy to say that this particular episode will have our first guest. It is a very special episode. Uh, This particular episode, I want to touch on a topic that is very near and dear to me. Um, It is something that's kind of shaped the last eight months and has seriously gotten me to where I am today. Um, And I want to talk about mental alchemy. Um, So what exactly is mental alchemy? Madam Google... (laughs) defines it as the process of transformation that happens on the mental and spiritual planes. So through mental alchemy, one transforms their inner life form uh, uh, from undesirable to desirable. So the concept of turning lead into gold is spiritually. Um, And it sounds very cliche, but the whole power uh, of thought ideology, you know, the law of attraction, positive thinking, all of that good stuff. But there's so much more to it. Um, I have, now that I've immersed myself into mental alchemy, I realize that I have been practicing this long before I even knew what it was. Um, Long before uh, I even started my spiritual journey, um, the power of the mind, that the notion that all is mental, um, is something that was kind of always in my subconscious, you know, where things would magically happen in my favor. Um, things would magically work out and what seemed like impossible became possible, right? Um, now, as a disclaimer, I want to say that the concept of mental alchemy takes an extremely open mind and an extremely open heart, Um Understanding this made me challenge my own belief systems and time and time again, uh, they were challenged until I learned how to balance it with what resonates with me. Um, It is not always easy to grasp and sometimes it can be very, very frustrating. But baby, when you understand how to make it work for you, things really start to line up out of nowhere because all of the, the all because the power of you you are the tool who made it happen um now that doesn't mean that i don't have my altars that doesn't mean that i don't do my rituals that doesn't mean that i don't slang these cards you guys know it goes down however when it's a full moon and you're on social media and you see everybody saying, what are you doing for the full moon? What are you doing for the full moon? What are you doing for the full moon? And you start to feel that pressure that you have to do something. When it comes to mental alchemy, I set my intentions without moving. I set my intentions without setting up a ritual. I set my intentions because that's literally all I have energy to do. Um, there are times where I will get up and uh, those of you who have seen my rituals, who have paid me for ritual work, you will know I put my whole foot in that thing and I create very elaborate rituals, but that's not always the case. Sometimes my rituals are very simple. Um, and sometimes I don't do rituals at all. The times that I do not do rituals is when I lean on my my capabilities of mental alchemy. Um, so the person that will be joining us today um, is actually who I learned a lot from. She is absolutely amazing. She is extremely knowledgeable. And she's honestly an actual treasure to the spiritual community. Um, and the work she does is invaluable. Um, she... Let me tell you about how much free game she gives. Like, I was learning from her. I've been learning from her almost from the start because she's just brilliant. <laughs> and I could go on and on and on about her for days. But I want to give the bulk of this episode um, to her so she can talk to you guys and really just get this conversation going about mental alchemy and how it can shape 
your life, um, especially how it shaped mine. Um, I consider her a very good friend, um, and I'm extremely happy she's here with us today. But before I introduce her, you guys know I'm going to stop. I'm going to throw this ad in the middle of this episode, and we're going to keep it pushing. All right? Hold on one second, guys. So if you're like me and you're just starting out on your podcast or, you know, you're looking for a different platform for your podcast, um, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. And, you know, let me go over a couple of points for you. It's free. That's the main thing. Uh, There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer because I keep my phone on me everywhere. So it's super convenient for me. Uh, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, like pretty much everywhere. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum li- listenership. It's everything that you need to make your podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, so now that we're back, let's cut all of the suspense and bring on our very special guest. Um, if you guys are on Facebook, you guys would know her as Beautiful Brew. So thank you very much for joining me as my first guest. Thank you so much for having me. I am really honored and appreciative for this opportunity. Oh, all day. I am. The honor is mine. Trust me. Um, so just so we can start, for those who are not familiar with you, um, if you don't mind telling me a little bit about your journey and just how alchemy has changed you. Well, um, I was really always encouraged um, during my upbringing and my childhood and my formative years to uh, really think critically, to think freely and to think for myself. So I believe, honestly, that that's what really enabled me to be receptive enough towards mental alchemy and really to um, alchemy overall um, once it was presented to me formally. Um, Because I had been really incorporating the fundamentals of it in my life informally for so long. Um, I don't know if I can say that it has really changed my life. I think more so that it has helped me to solidify my life, to give it a context and maybe like a deeper identity. That makes sense. That definitely makes sense. And I, and I will have to agree with you. My mom definitely gave me free reign to be a free thinker. Um, I didn't really grow up in the church like at all. Sometimes I feel Mm -hmm. like that's a hindrance, especially when it comes to hoodoo, but that's a whole nother thing. But I definitely feel like (laughs) it helped me a lot to accept the ideology of mental alchemy, because like I said earlier, before I brought you on, you have to have an open mind and an open heart completely to adopt these ideals. Yes, Because it can seem so foreign if you're coming from a place with a lot of structure. Mm -hmm. Um, Alchemy does have its own principles and its own structure and its own foundations, but it can be so different from what we're used to because it is anchored in free thought, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. to use those two terms together. (laughs) It's one of those rare oxymorons that makes absolutely sense. Um, Exactly. Okay, so talking about having this open mind, this open heart, um, let's say if we have somebody who is trying to, and I hate to use the term break free from, you know, the church and whatever Mm -hmm. religious um, beliefs that they were brought up with, if they feel like they need more, shall I say, how can someone um, begin to open up their mind to mental alchemy? Um, I feel like that with anything that's new and different to our understanding, you would have to be willing to approach it with a mind that's just like a clean slate, basically. I wouldn't say that you have to abandon every and all understanding that you have, but once you begin to familiarize yourself with alchemy, um, a new perspective can be given to the understanding that you already do have. So um, I think it's it, and it's really not something that, Um, can be contrasted to just religion. I think a lot of people coming from the magical community and other um, avenues in the spiritual community as well can serve themselves by opening their minds up to mental and spiritual alchemy. I I feel like I would have to agree with that because I know myself, um, I was all about, you know, heavy in these magical streets and you need a tool for everything and like 
I will say one of the biggest things that mental alchemy has taught me, especially when it comes to deities, is to not have the deities be above you. The deities Mm -hmm. are a reflection of you. And I think that was one of the biggest things that helped me open my mind to understanding that I am the tool. I am the ultimate tool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And definitely I feel like that's huge when it comes to opening your mind when you're not in the religious aspect when you're still part of the spiritual community um and I feel like that's not to say that you can't be in hoodoo be in voodoo be in all of these different um spiritual paths and work with mental alchemy yeah, absolutely. There are ways to incorporate it into everything. There are some people who choose to weave it into their current belief systems. Mm-hmm. And then there are those who choose to um, shed all of their other belief systems and kind of merge it and then adopt one complete system. So I think that's kind of where I fell in a little mm-hmm. bit or fall in currently. And that makes sense. Because I, I'm sorry, I think I think we definitely see parallels with um, religion, spirituality, and magic that can hold us back if we allow Mm -hmm. it to. But I think that if we um, open our mind to the fundamentals of alchemy, then we can use it to either replace or complement our beliefs. That is, that's straight facts right there. I completely, completely agree. And I know that you touched on... um, as far as there still being like universal laws, different different structures when it comes to mental alchemy, um, do you care to just kind of go over a couple of those and maybe some do's and don'ts when it comes to mental alchemy? Sure. Um, I really think that because alchemy is so freeing and it, yet it's very direct, which is kind of like the oxymoron that we spoke about um, not long ago. I think that's a question that the individual would really be able to form an answer to for themselves. So like once they begin to see how they can apply the tenets of alchemy to their own reality, um, the principles naturally begin to categorize themselves into a set of like unique and personal do's and don'ts, if that makes sense. So you can kind of use the basis of alchemy to formulate what your personal do's and don'ts will be. And I think that it helps because you use this, um, this belief system or this knowledge rather to decide who you are and what you are. And that's where the personal do's and don'ts would come in. I think. I love that. I love that. And it's so true, especially when you're using it in tandem with your other belief systems. I feel like it kind of strengthens that almost where absolutely um, you have this personal law, this personal code of conduct for yourself as it works with your hoodoo, your voodoo, you know, any ATR that you might be, even if you're Wicca, you know, it still works in tandem with everything. And I, and I think that's the reason why I gravitated to it so much, just because I feel Mm -hmm. like in this particular lifetime, I'm working with the integration of all. So my star seed, my hoodoo, now my mental alchemy and all of these different things. And I feel like, Mental al- alchemy is the glue that kind of sticks everything together. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree. It's, it's so, it is freeing, like you said. Like, even though you have a certain code of conduct, it's very freeing to tap into. Um, it is. I, now I, I'm going to go into um, a little bit of how this works with... Um, our platforms and, you know, our respective platforms and especially across Mm -hmm. social media. Um, We both spend a lot of our time on social media when it comes to giving these messages using our platforms. Uh, How much of an impact do you feel social media has on helping or hindering one's ability to understand mental alchemy? Because we're constantly looking at our phones and we're constantly getting messages literally from everywhere. And sometimes it's the blind leading the blind child. So (laughs) we know this now. (laughs) So how do you feel social media helps or hinders that? I honestly believe that as with any platform, um, you can observe 
like stories and situations and experiences from others and yourself, honestly, but from others and yourself that would allow you to apply the principles, principles, excuse me, of mental alchemy. If you've developed um, what you would call like a familiarity with the info, you'll see opportunity everywhere to get an understanding of it. So social media, I think is no exception. There are drawbacks and there are advantages just like with any other medium. But I think that if you are being intentional and you're open and willing to see the reflection of yourself in others, then you can take the experiences that are there and that are presented to you and use them to even say, okay, this is an example of what to do, or this might be an example of what not to do. So um, if you're not being intentional with your learning, just like, you know, with anything in life, not just social media, but I think it's because that's so much of a presence in our daily lives, not just yours and mine but with the others that we interact with and even people who may not know us, but because it's so present and it's so there, um, I think that you can find examples of it wherever you're looking for them. And then that's what you can use to apply your knowledge. But again, you have to be intentional and you have to be receptive. Oh, you use my favorite word, discernment. Like, (laughs) girl, I want to, I'm going to do a whole podcast episode on just discernment because it just rolls off the tongue. So don't it, (laughs) Now, I know people are listening and and they're thinking, okay, well, you guys are talking about all of this stuff. What are, how do you put mental alchemy to practice? So I feel like if we talk about a couple of the laws, maybe that might Mm -hmm. help um, to help anybody who's still a a little shaky on the concept. Sure. Um, Well, because alchemy is literally based on the concept of transformation and change. Um, I think that I see, well, I really, I see people a lot who are stuck in situations, thought patterns, behavioral cycles, all kinds of things like that. And if you are open again to applying the information, the universal laws, like the, my favorite, the law of mentalism, all is mental. If you use that kind of, in relation to alchemy, which again is the process of transforming and changing, not just things around you, but yourself. And that's how you're going to change the things around you. Once you understand that all is formed in the mind and then what is formed in the mind becomes our reality, that gives you something to work with. That gives you um, a stepping stone. That gives you somewhere to start and say, okay, if everything is starts, you know, starts in my mind, then what can I do to change my reality? And the number one concept or what I call alchemy 101 is if you cannot change yourself, you change the situation or you change, I'm sorry, if you cannot change your situation, you change yourself meaning you change the perspective that you have in regards to the situation. And I think that we've seen that or heard that even um, in several different examples where we hear the phrase, um, it's not the situation, it's your reaction to the situation. Exactly. So that's kind of where alchemy formulates for most people. And that is kind of the basis of the understanding of it. And that's why I say that a lot of us were or are practicing it and may not even know it because it isn't given to us in that structured way, but we see it or come across it in life in other forms or other patterns. And we don't realize, okay, this is alchemy. Once you put a name and a structure to it, it's like, Oh, I've been doing that, exactly. but this is the thing. Okay. Well, let me incorporate mm-hmm. it more, you know? So I, I think that understanding those basic understandings of what alchemy is and the law of mentalism Go, doing that and solidifying yourself with that understanding, one, it pushes you to kind of understand more, to want to know more, more universal laws. Well, okay, this is something interesting. What are the rest of them? And how can I use them in conjunction with one another and complement with one another? And then you open yourself up to alchemy in general by doing that. That's awesome. I Do y'all see why I've been following her forever? Like, <laughs> I appreciate I, it. Girl, let me tell you, the way that you are able to break things down to where even my airheaded behind can understand it, <laughs> like it is so appreciated. That's I'm another one. Girl. <laughs> and it's so needed because like I remember um I am in her exclusive group uh called the Beautiful Ones. Shout out ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Um <laughs> But there was an exercise that we did where 
you were live and you pretty much said take all of the energy from people who you know you think are hating on you and different things like that and transmute that take that energy and make it yes. work for you and that was the dopest shit i've ever heard because as you guys have heard me say your haters are your biggest pieces of manifestation because they believe in you more than you do Mm -hmm. so take that energy take all of that belief whether it's because they hate and because they're jealous take all of that energy and transmute it into energy that works for you and that is alchemy and that was some of the in a mundane context we hear that all the time my haters are my biggest supporters but I don't think people know exactly what to do with that okay we understand that but how do I transmute that and what is transmutation like what what does that even mean I think a lot of people will say that to make themselves feel better, but they don't know exactly what to do to use that to fuel themselves. Now, a lot of people do, you know, they, they always say, well, if someone told me I couldn't make it, that made me want to make it even more. So, you know, just putting it into understandings um, in a mundane way that we can relate to and say, oh, okay. Yeah. Then you start to see principles of alchemy pop up all over the place. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, now that it's something that I live, I, I swear, I like, I'm seeing it on TV. I'm seeing it with my kids. Mm-hmm. It's like, it pops up <laughs> right. everywhere. Right <laughs> now, yep. when it, we talk about the broad spectrum, not just how it works for us as an individual, where do you feel collectively, especially when the way the world is right now, where we would benefit from adopting mental alchemy um, in tandem with what we're already doing or just moving completely into that realm, depending on the person. Right. Um, well, people clearly could benefit from finding ways to transform their experiences from what we call the figurative lead into gold, which when we're speaking about alchemy in its purest form, it was a scientific process. Mm-hmm. It was a chemical process. But once it started to evolve, we started to see people use it in a mental, spiritual, even a financial um, way. You have financial alchemy as well. So it's based on the process of turning lead into gold. And in some of my lives, I have referred to this phraseology as a way for people to understand what exactly it is we're doing when we say transmutation or using alchemy. And so people have to be willing to basically... Um, Look for other ways. Some people like to be stuck in a victim mentality. Some people like, we know this, (laughs) some people like to be, or I don't want to say like to be, but some people are more comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are some who, you know, in some type of a a masochistic way, I guess, (laughs) will like to be victims. But there are those who are just stuck in that pattern, that cycle. And it's in their trap there and they're stuck. So if you are willing to transmute and willing to see that life is happening for you, not to you, one of our favorite phrases, Mm -hmm. then I think there could be a collective benefit. But this has to be something that is, again, willing. People have to be willing. And a lot of times people are not. But once you have the openness there and the receptivity there, then I think you start to see how the collective benefit comes in. Because who wouldn't benefit from trans? or transmuting, I guess you could say, lead into gold. You know, you take what you're given, that lump of coal, and then you turn it into something beautiful. But if people realize that this is something that we actually have the power to do, then they become more powerful themselves. So it's just really about accepting not only the responsibility for doing that, but the reward for it, because there's always going to be a reward. You just have to be open again to seeing that. Absolutely. And that's really what it all boils down to. You have to be open. You have to be willing to see beyond what you know and expand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just it. That's really, like you said, that's what it boils down to. And it's so funny to use that term when we're talking about alchemy because it is that scientific (laughs) process. But this is where it really would apply. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, Really quick, if there's anybody who may be looking for books or any type of resources, are there any books that you would recommend people check out? 
definitely my first go-to for beginners with alchemy would be the complete idiot's guide to alchemy which you know we are discussing in our group Mm -hmm. or will be currently uh, coming up soon sorry discussing in our group that is a great starters book for not only learning the history of alchemy where it came from the origins of it and how it evolved into the practice that we know now but understanding the tenets of it Um, the application of it, that's really, really important. For those who are um, past beginner stage alchemy, but maybe a little bit deeper into it, I would um, recommend the Emerald Tablets um, of Thoth or um, the Kabbalion is a really good book to get into. Really anything that explains or breaks down alchemy or hermetics is what I would recommend. And you can always Google and look and see which um, manuscript you're drawn to. But I would recommend anything having to do with alchemy, mental, spiritual alchemy, or hermetics. That is, Or, I'm sorry, also Universal Law. Definitely a great place to start. Uh, yeah. I cannot forget those. <laughs> I have the Complete Idiot's Guide, and I'm actually very excited that the group is going to go over that book. Um, yeah. Because it'll force me to sit down and, like, work in tandem with everybody else. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Sometimes we need that. Girl, because, you know, I'll be all over the place. Um, <laughs> so what is next for you, and how can somebody start to follow and connect with you outside of this uh, podcast? I am on Facebook. That is my biggest platform because that is the one that I give the most energy to. I would say my Facebook page, of course, is Beautiful Brew, B-R-U. I'm also on Instagram, Beautiful Brew 111. That's three ones. And then my products are on um my website, which is www.beautifulbrew.com. Um, I've already begun to really redirect my efforts less towards magic, where which is where I started, and more towards the fundamentals of alchemy. So that's great timing that we had this conversation Absolutely. because even as um, as they were able to be applied to magic, but as well as the mundane. So I think we see a heavy concentration on magic, but I also noticed that there's a subtle underlying shift kind of towards a need for even deeper understanding than just magic. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are starting to see um, the parallels between magic in the community, not magic in in and of itself, but as it's presented to us through social media. Mm -hmm. So I think they're starting to see parallels with that and religion. And some people are still feeling the need to break out even more and just wanting to be even freer. Absolutely. And I feel as if alchemy can fill that void for so many people. So that's where I want to direct my brand and my energy and my efforts. So if anyone is interested in that, they can definitely find follow the pages. You don't even have to um, purchase products to get the understanding of the knowledge. The products are just compliments to whatever you're learning. Now, hold on now. I'm going to tell you about these products, though, because she's <laughs> underplaying the hell out of herself right now. Um, I have her ancestor oil, and it is some of the best ancestor oil. I put it on my ancestor candles every time I refresh my altar. And these flames dance. My people are happy. I love this oil. And she also <laughs> has a, a special little item called ju- a Juice Box Juju now. <laughs> This is this is this, this is, is some... the two year anniversary for it. That is so it, crazy. Girl, listen. <laughs> I, I, I'm a fan. All I'm saying is <laughs> when you trying to get your little nice little sex magic going, you want it in the room, you want it with you. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it like that. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it there. But her products are bomb. She's bomb. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, that endorsement. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Listen, I I appreciate you so much for being my first Likewise. guest and hopping on here with me, with me and my foolishness. Um, <laughs> again, guys, follow her, please, please follow her because, like I said, the amount of free game she gives is out of this world, and she is, for one, I, I feel like, and I know you're glad. But, like, you are so slept on. Like, <laughs> your following should be, like, triple what it is right now. 
because of, I have said that before that I was glad, didn't I? I've been yeah, up saying yeah, that. yeah. But I feel like who need who needs to find me will always find me. Exactly. My tribe will find me, exactly. and I love that because I don't I don't feel the need to like you know out and reach for people to come to me. I just feel like I put out the information that resonates with me personally, mm -hmm. and those who are gravitating towards it are those who need it. So. I'm always grateful for that. But any opportunities for people to find me, I'm also open to that as well. So, you know. <laughs> well, I'm going to always be a stan. And I'm happy to be here to watch you grow as large as you are supposed to grow. I really appreciate it. And just to give you your flowers, I am likewise. Oh. Because I have totally been binge watching your YouTube channel for like the past month. <laughs> <laughs> My son, he's even like, hey, it's your girl, Coco Kid. Uh <laughs> he knows <laughs> he knows the intro by heart. And I'm like, Lord. <laughs> Look, I could talk about your son forever. I love him. <laughs> I love him. I love him so very much. <laughs> I'm so thankful for you and this opportunity. I really am because this is definitely pushing my comfort zone but it is giving a voice to um something that again i feel a lot of people are looking for they just may not know what it is so hopefully um those who are listening will follow the page and you know may even try some of the products as well to get um more comfortable with their understanding and their application of alchemy it's a beautiful thing absolutely absolutely guys um follow her hell follow me across all social media coco kitten bruja um you guys know to hit me up if you're looking for any personal readings um, and check out the YouTube as well, because I will now be having the podcast on the YouTube um, and as well as everything else. Um, I There is no reading this episode. So if you guys have been waiting for it, I'm not doing a reading this episode because next week is what? Tipsy Tarot Tuesday. I'm bringing it back. So you guys check out next week for your complete drag. And until next time, guys, I'm wishing you tons of love and light. Peace.